So. What the frick? <laughs> oh my God, New Zealand. Hey everyone, welcome to Our Life E3. I'm Steve. And I'm Mary. We consider ourselves pretty seasoned travelers, but we make mistakes along the way. And today we would like to share our top 10 lessons learned for our most recent travels, which had us moving overseas. As you know, we've planned for quite a while to make this migration to New Zealand and do some major hiking. We actually started planning over a year ago. However, we made some errors in the planning. I think the first big error I want to discuss is being separated. We were separated for about four or five months. Can we make sure they understand this? We, we didn't separate. We separated duties. <laughs> we've been, well, married, we we've been <laughs> married over 30 years. Uh, and so maybe a separation was in order. I don't know. Maybe you needed some time. But, uh, I just need my time. But I, I had already retired and Mary had not retired. And I thought, hmm, I'm going to go back to work, make a little more cash, get ready for this trip. So I took on a consulting job in Columbus, Ohio. And at the same time, we decided we'd pick up a rental property down in Florida. I was working in Columbus while Mary was in Atlantic Beach. And that was not a good time to go separate ways. We had a lot of planning to do. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but there's decisions that need to be made that are much better done face to face. We would split the duties up, like, uh, you know, who is doing what and, uh, you know, working through it best we could. And unfortunately, it didn't always work out the best for us. <laughs> All right, there, you know what, another thing that we did. Or didn't do. Or didn't do. <laughs> we really wanted to both of us stop working about three months before we left the states um, what we ended up with was two weeks it just left us very very little time to actually do those final things that we needed to do before hopping on a plane and leaving the states for a couple years now, to, to kind of put that in perspective, too, what we were talking about when we were leaving work was not only leaving the job, but making sure we transitioned retirement funds, disposing of the apartment, storing the van, visiting my dad, your mom, our daughter. So we really had two weeks to do what easily should have been a month or two months. That did not work out to our advantage in any way. We knew we were going to New Zealand, but we hadn't actually purchased our flights. And unfortunately, what that left was... Wild imagination. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so in the time it took to start looking for flights, we got an email in from a travel company that we've used in the past with a really great deal on a Bangkok tour. Hey, Bangkok, you know, we'll, uh, that's, we're flying all that way. Let's just go to Bangkok on the way. Which at that point I said to Mary, Ooh, I've always wanted to go to Phuket. I hear the beaches are phenomenal. In the course of getting there, we found out we had to then fly through Hong Kong. Oh, there's a Disneyland in Hong Kong. On calling our daughter Jess and saying, hey, there's a Disneyland in Hong Kong, she said, oh my gosh, I want to go too. Have you thought about adding Shanghai? We did. <laughs> <laughs> and then as long as we were doing that, we thought, okay, how to get from Phuket to Auckland, the most inexpensive flight is if we go through Vietnam. So just to put this in perspective, in November 3rd, we should have left and gone to New Zealand and had a month in New Zealand to prep for our hikes. Instead, on November 3rd, we left, flew to Hong Kong, flew from Hong Kong to Shanghai, did three days in Shanghai Disney, flew back to Hong Kong, four days in Hong Kong Disney, flew to Bangkok, Thailand for a nine-day tour, followed by a flight to Phuket 
for four days of sitting on a beach, followed by a jet to Ho Chi Minh for two days of touring, a two-night train ride, a two-night cruise, and then a flight out to Auckland. That was way, way too much to take on. Instead of just going on our trip, we, we really just jam-packed ourselves full of things to do. The end result of that is we arrived in Auckland puckered out. So while we were gallivanting around Asia, at some point Mary said, um, where are we staying in Auckland? <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately there was no answer. because <laughs> We had we... planned all the great walks and all the hikes and never even once thought, maybe we need a place to stay when we first get there. Yeah, and a rental vehicle just to get us around for the first little bit. So over breakfast one morning while on the tour in Bangkok, Mary was organizing our uh, rental and place to stay. We should have given ourselves two weeks to get acclimated to New Zealand life uh, before we planned our first activity, but unfortunately that first one was in was about a week after we got there. And that was just a little too fast. Um, we didn't leave enough time. We also made a silly assumption, which was we came from America where if I needed a vehicle, you pretty much just go out and there's about a dozen, two dozen to choose from and you grab one and go. Not the case in New Zealand. It really is a conglomerate of mom and pop shops and individuals selling through Facebook ads, which really led us to not find a camper van right off the bat. I mean, we, we came in and should have had a week to shop and we left ourselves basically three days to shop. Uh, by the time we got past day one and jet lag, day two came around and we saw a couple vans and thought, ooh, what do we get into? On day three, we ended up at a place that was probably not our wisest choice of a van and it was definitely overpriced but we were up against our deadline so i think we ended up taking a van and paying more than we needed to to meet a timeline that was unrealistic yeah we had a rough idea of what we wanted and what we needed based on our van in the united states um <laughs> we weren't getting that <laughs> but there's <laughs> we weren't even going to get anything close just because of our budget uh was was small it wasn't unrealistic it's just that uh we needed to allow more time to do some real shopping i i honestly we were here nine months we should have given ourselves at least a couple of weeks the next mistake that we made was just in carrying cash. And it's not because we carried cash. No. I always carry cash in the currency of the, the country that you're going to. And always get it before you leave the States. It's well worth having it and not having to fight the last minute, get to the airport and you don't have the right currency. So we did go out to our bank and said, oh yeah, we need some New Zealand dollars, some Chinese currency, some Vietnam currency, some Thai currency. And we plotted and uh, thought- In Hong Kong. In Hong Kong currency. Because it has its own. Mary came home from the bank. Two bags. Two huge Two bags. bags. <laughs> it wasn't that much money, but they didn't get large denominations. So like we it's, had 7,000 yeah. New Zealand dollars to buy a van in 20s, in 20s. <laughs> 20s, 10s, and 5s. Oh. It wasn't all in 20s. So it we added ridiculous. a good five pounds worth of currency that we then had to carry around with us, expending each. And it, it, of course, everywhere we went first, China and Hong Kong was the least amount. The heaviest currency we were carrying was the last stops. Then as we started getting ready to go with this big bulk of currency, that's when we decided we were going to look at the restrictions of entering a country with foreign currency. Yeah, yeah. Always do that up front. How much can you bring into a country? And fortunately, we were okay. If we had allotted more time, we could have sewed money into the lining of our shorts and clothing. 
So we would have just made our clothing out of the money. It was all plastic. It was very good quality. That is a well insulated <laughs> coat, sir. What is it made of? 50s and 100s. <laughs> we wish it was 50s and 100s. <laughs> fives. It's made fives. of fives. <laughs> Yikes. So the, the next biggest mistake that we made was that we never allowed decompression time between our work and starting this. We packed that schedule full and added a bunch of stuff and it really resulted into run, 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 run. Yeah, just, just getting off of work. I know that I was so stressed. It took... I don't know, it took me probably two, three months after leaving work just with with everything going on to actually start feeling normal again. Everybody that listens to us on a channel has probably gone on a vacation at some point. And you know the deal when you left work on a Friday and tried to hop a flight Friday night to get on a cruise Saturday. It's just crazy. And we were leaving the United States for a year or two. <laughs> we... <laughs> Yeah. What? Not, what? not smart. What were we thinking? <laughs> we weren't. We weren't thinking. Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah. And on top of that, we, our travel or was jammed. So yeah. not only did we say, "Hey, you know, we we covered all of the locations that we went to. We had something to do every single day." There is nothing relaxing about going to a Disney park, especially a new one in a foreign country. And there is absolutely nothing relaxing about a planned tour that gets you up at six every morning <laughs> in the first shrines at nine and back to the hotel at eight. Yeah. No. Of course, we had to put Fritz away and it's never a good thing to put a vehicle away for months. And we were looking at putting a vehicle away for two years. So not only did we leave work at the last minute, but we had to get to a storage location, get an oil change done, get the batteries ready to go offline, offline the solar. And the place that we had lined up to store it all of a sudden pulled the, yeah, we don't know about you guys. We have no reservations. So we, we got to really run quickly for a new storage location and found a great company. Uh, we really appreciate them coming in for us, but yeah, it, it it made things more hectic from that standpoint. Yeah, and not only that, it was halfway across the country from where we were. So, so we did <laughs> had to had to had drive to a drive. thousand miles to drop the vehicle and then go from there. Yeah. yeah. With all of that travel from country to country and all of the different flights, it started to restrict how much we could take with us. Yes. From a baggage weight perspective. Apparently you know, not. you know, you go on a trip and you make a list and yeah, I'm going to bring three pair of pants, two shirts, four pair of underwears and a toothbrush and off you go. That's all fine and good. But we were actually planning on New Zealand and then from New Zealand over to Australia. So we were talking about packing for a year to two years. Well, and then backpacking. And so backpacking. Our, our tents and our sleeping bags and our our. Um, you know, everything that we needed, our stoves and... Well, Regular every, shoes, tennis shoes, hiking, hiking shoes, boots. hiking poles, water, filtration, <laughs> cookware, stoves. And so we got all this in a bag and weighed the bag and we were, we were doomed. Way overweight for any airline. So, I mean, we really had to pack and repack and pack and pack. The end result was what we started with in Ohio is not what we ended up with in Auckland. So, hence getting to New Zealand and having to buy a rain jacket. Yes. <laughs> and, a, and a new pair of shoes. Why do I only have one pair of pants? And <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's honestly, I have two pair of pants, four shirts, and two pair of shorts. That is my entire wardrobe. So as you look at these videos and go, hey, he wore that shirt last time. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, we're both in that boat. You're, you're going to see a lot of repeat. It's just, hey, that's how it goes. And it, it really is 
you cannot get a new thing without something else going to the trash. That is just the way this world works when you travel. Yeah. You know what? We really need to learn to pack lighter. One morning while sitting at breakfast with Lada, our tour guide in Bangkok, she was talking to another person who was traveling to Vietnam. And she said, don't forget to make sure your visa is exactly worded the way that it is on your passport. Even one letter off on the visa will stop you from entering Vietnam. They are so picky about it. And we said, what visa? Visa? We needed a visa and we needed it very quickly because we were in Thailand and Within in seven days would be on our way to Vietnam. Oh, that's right. So and we paid for a rush visa job, put through paperwork again in the middle of the night in a hotel room in Thailand. And it worked out because the very next day we had a visa. Yes, we did. We really lucked out because when we were standing in line checking in for our flight heading to Vietnam, there were some people in front of us that didn't have visas and they didn't have everything in order and they were not allowed to yep. check in for the flight. Yep. That would have been us. We got very, very lucky. There are a lot of rules in traveling through foreign airports and countries. And these people are well versed in what the needs and things you should do and not do are, and they will not let you on a flight. This is a totally side thing, but even when we left Vietnam on our way to Auckland, mm -hmm. they were sticking by the, you do not have an exit flight planned for leaving New Zealand and we are not gonna let you on the flight. And we said, no, wait, we have a nine month visa. We only have to show proof that we have money to purchase a flight. You don't have to have a... No, 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 no. And we ended up in arguments with them over this, but... Yeah, it ended up escalating up to a manager who fortunately, fortunately knew the rules. let us on the flight. I was so calm. I was like, please, you have to understand this is the way things are. And Mary's like, ah, you will let us on the flight. Ah, you will let us on the flight. Ah. It was scary. <laughs> I don't scary. think that happened either way. I worried because so much about losing her in Vietnam. They were going to come and cane her, take her to a Viet jail. <sighs> oh, my God. It, it was very stressful times. And, um, yeah, it was a little concerning. Yep. Another rush thing we did right before leaving Ohio, we decided we would try to meet with people that just got back over a dinner. And we crammed a two, three hour dinner session with about five months worth of their travel history into a two, three hour dinner session. Fortunately, somebody wasn't drinking beer and remembered some of what was said, like uh, AAA. Yeah, but unfortunately that person didn't act on it in the appropriate manner. So I knew that when we got here to New Zealand that it was um, insurance was a, a little bit different. Auto insurance, you don't have to have it. It's not required, but it's, it's best to have it. And then secondly, um, AAA, they have AA here, Auto Club, Auto, Auto, what is it? AAA is American Auto. American Automobile Association. Association. This is just Automobile, Automobile. Association. Yeah. So they have AA here, which is a sister company. A Larger parent, battery than a AAA. A parent company, yes. <laughs> Do AAA. Had we listened closer, if we would have had AAA, it would have covered us for our time here in New Zealand, just like AA. We had AAA. We let it expire knowing we were traveling overseas. Should have just kept it. But yeah, we, we definitely should have. Uh, anyway, we got to rebuy AA here. Which is more expensive than AAA was in the States. So that's it. Those are our 10 biggest mistakes Booby that we traps. made. Yeah. Our, Errors. Fiascos. Our, Nimrods. Our lessons learned. I would love, love, love to say we're never going to make those mistakes again. We are. We're, we're going to. Recapping. Plan together. 
Not a part. Allow plenty of time for what needs to be done before you leave the country. Stay focused on the prize, where you're going, what you're doing. Don't get distracted with a bunch of other stuff. Make sure you have at least a minimum your first two weeks in the new country planned. Do not rush on a major purchase by not allowing yourself proper time to do so. Know the countries that you're traveling through their cash limits. Allow a lot of time to decompress between travel events and work. Confirm and then reconfirm reservations across the board. Actually read and learn about visas before trying to go to a country. <laughs> and lastly, know how insurance works. Know how your insurance might work in another country and any reciprocal type of offerings and coverage. That could be a whole nother topic. What's this uh, COVID mean to our health insurance and travel insurance? And Oh, yeah. That's oh, something yeah. like totally different. Ugh. Uh, we won't go there today. Not today. Thanks for joining us. We hope you found this useful and informative. Maybe you will not make the mistakes that we have made. And we'll probably do again. Just saying. Will we? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. Remember to find your dream and own it. Safe Charles, everyone. If you found this information useful, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. It'll help other people find our video.